people try to put certain things into really tight boxes. Like, in order to be a woodworker, you must do this. You must use hand tools. You must um, put things together in a certain way. And honestly, I, I don't buy that. Um, I think being a woodworker is whatever your version of being a woodworker is. Uh, being a maker is whatever your version of being a maker is. And I think it's ridiculous to let other people define that for you. And I definitely don't let people define that for me. All right. Okay. I'm Johnny from Johnny Builds, and I'm a maker here in Oklahoma City. We're here on the north side of Oklahoma City. This is my um, about 1,500 square foot shop space. And I've been in Oklahoma since I got out of the Marine Corps, which was in 2001. This kind of accidentally became my home. <laughs> I actually like living here in Oklahoma. You know, it's not the coolest place in the world. It's getting better. Uh, the weather sucks. Um, we, it's, it's hot as hell in the summer, muggy as hell. It's really cold in the winter. We just got over a uh, snowstorm. Um, we have tornadoes, I hate tornadoes, but <laughs> the opposite side of that, it's really easy and convenient to live here. Um, and as much as I was dead set on leaving, I actually really like it here, <laughs> despite all of that other stuff. And I can see myself being here for forever, really. This is where I get my uh, hardwood and plywood in Oklahoma City. This is Phoenix Hardwood. Um, we picked up some eight quarter walnut boards because on my latest project, I totally uh, screwed something up and I'm gonna use this to fix it. So a $260 mistake. <laughs> it's never the one on the top of the stack, huh? When I got out of the Marine Corps and I came back to Oklahoma City, uh, I got hired on as a police officer with the uh, local police department. I've been doing that for just shy of 20 years now. Uh, spent 12 and a half years of that as an investigator. And right now, I'm just uh, working my way towards retirement, which is gonna come up very soon. A little too soon, but I'm excited. You know, every five-year-old kid wants to be a YouTuber, you know, and here I am, this 40-year-old dude that <laughs> wants to make YouTube videos. So I kind of got my start uh, making things, you know, just like a lot of people. Instead of wanting to go out and buy furniture from Target, I wanted to build some things for myself. Uh, did a little bit of research, actually bought a uh, book about DIY. Uh, off Amazon. It happened to be Ben Ueda's book. I found his YouTube channel, which then led me down the YouTube rabbit hole, found uh, you know, Mike Montgomery from Modern Builds, Johnny Brook, and I was just hooked on all these YouTube makers. The maker community as a whole was my shop teacher. I didn't take shop in high school. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. And the more I watched, the more I started to build up my own collection of tools. But I started in my garage with just a circular saw and a couple of drills and no idea what I was doing, just cutting up some two by fours. And you, you figure out a certain uh, process or build a certain thing that you've wanted to build. And it's like, how can I do this better? Um, what's the next iteration of that? You know, next time am I, am I gonna build this instead of with two by fours and plywood, am I gonna do it with, you know, hardwood? And, and how does that work? And what tools do I need? And so I just kind of kept on that process um, for about a year and a half and decided to start my own channel. And I figured maybe this is another career path that I could take and I'm gonna be able to do this full time. It's a little bit scary. Uh, but really, really exciting. I had a relationship with a local business here in Oklahoma City called Vintage Reclaim Lumber. They would give me material to do projects and they gave me a bunch of um, like old reclaimed barn wood and it had all these really cool like cracks and checks in it and I was like, I'm gonna fill that with some turquoise epoxy. <laughs> That'll be pretty cool. Um, and it was an absolute nightmare of a project. It took me like three months. Um, I totally screwed it up. 
I never worked with epoxy before, but you know, I, I finished it, I released the video, and um, you know, it didn't really do much for the first couple days. And all of a sudden, like it was getting 10,000 views an hour. And then it was getting 50,000 views an hour. And in like two days, it had over a million views. And just like, and here I am like this, this nobody on YouTube and um, it blew up. I think it's got like maybe 11 million views now. I, I don't know, I haven't looked at it in a while, but uh, it still gets views to this day, which is crazy because it's a terrible video. Don't go watch it, it's, it's really bad. But uh, people seem to like it for some reason. So yeah, that was really like the point where I'm like, okay, I might be onto something. This is uh, cottonwood that was sourced right here in Oklahoma. There's such a big, heavy tree that you get what's called compression figure. And that's why you see all this crazy like quilting and 3D figure that's called chatoyance. The wood is absolutely insanely beautiful. I'm kind of hoping like through some of my projects, I can bring some awareness to how easy it is to get cottonwood and how absolutely beautiful it is to work with. You know, I use my CNC heavily, um, but I had this fear of not being relatable. You know, it's my version of being a maker. It's my version of being a woodworker. And I think that no one should let anyone else tell you what your version of that thing is. And I was like, you know what? This is the thing that allows me to be the most creative version of myself. And that's what I really enjoy. So I'm just gonna lean into it. And just, if people don't like it, then they don't have to watch. I love it and I'm not gonna stop using it. I get uh, comments all the time telling me all I do is push buttons. And I'm like, cool, <laughs> fine. I'm a button pusher, but I really love being a button pusher. This is not the original handle, by the way. This is uh, Johnny Jankarama right here. Honestly, just within the last couple months is where I'm like, this is really, this is working. Because I'm, I'm like, I'm hitting numbers and getting sponsors unlike anything, I, like consistently, unlike anything I've ever done. Um, and I don't know if this is good for the video or whatever, but just like person to person, like, um, it's really changed some things, you know. Um, I don't know if you knew about the whole issue with the business that I started with that guy and then it all kind of fell apart, that slab business. I lost a bunch of money and that was a huge setback. And I was like, you know, I, I actually promised my wife, I'm gonna do one more year in the police department because she was nervous as hell and did not want me to retire. She wants me to do five more years. Um, I'm like, I, I can't can't stay there I'll do one more but now like just within the last couple months I'm like I'm leaving you know and she's like okay I see it now so it's really very recent um, I feel like I finally cracked the, the the formula you know knock on UHMW not just like it's already a business and I already like make money at it but it's got to be more than that you know, I've got a family. I've got to take care of my wife. I've got a daughter. Um, so it's a scary thing to step away from that guaranteed income and just say, I'm gonna let an algorithm dictate my life. But really that's not true, you know. Yes, the algorithm kind of guides a lot of things, but if you're consistent and if you put out good quality content and you make things that you're truly excited about. Being yourself and showing your true personality, and if you're a goofy fucker like I am, be a goofy fucker in your shop, you know? Like, I, I think that's, that's important because if people are really gonna connect with you in a way where they wanna watch you build whatever stupid little trinket that you're building, it's because they're connecting with you more than they are the individual build. The build's gotta be good, um, but 
I don't know, it, it took me a long time to kind of find that voice. I'm kind of an IPA guy. Um, this is a double IPA with Turpin? Is that what she said? I don't know. Turpin or I don't know. That's one I haven't heard of before. This is Rough Tail Brewing. It's really close to my shop, so it's kind of my favorite brewery. But it's pretty good. We got some really, really good um, local beer here. I'd say my my the video I'm most proud of is the one that I I just released, where I made a um, a cheese board for my wife. It was a really cool project. Um, she had no idea, um, and you know it kind of had like this this little hidden uh, uh, thing inside with these these wooden knives that added this whole extra element. And you know we that's kind of our thing. We love having like big cheese boards, and you know we'll do like a date night where we just sit around and make a big cheese board and do it all fancy. And and so it was a fun and meaningful project to build. Um, she really liked it, and I just, I thought the video was, was fun. Yeah, like, I'm already like, how do I top that next year? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of wired that way. When I get passionate about something, I get really passionate about it. I got, I got into scuba diving, and I got certified, and then I wanted to be an instructor, and then I was traveling all the time, just diving, and I still love diving, and then I got really into running. And so I, I kind of stopped diving. And I got so crazy in the running that I was running ultra marathons and doing all this crazy stuff. Um, and then, you know, making took over my life. And, you know, now I like barely run at all. Like I put all that energy and effort into the thing that at that moment that I feel like really um, kind of defines who I am. And I, I do feel like, you know, being a maker is, is, you know, it's not just what I do. It's a part of who I am as a person. It's just weird because I'm definitely nowhere near, I'm rocking some serious dad bod now where I used to be like a freaking ultra runner, you know, running 100 mile races and shit. That person that I found through running those races still kind of informs who I am to this day. And I'm hoping that when I retire, um, even really before I retire, that I can kind of rediscover, you know, the, the fitness side of things and make that a priority, but, you know, fucking happy. So, <laughs> you know, like, if it's gonna take away from that, it's not worth it. I definitely get a lot of support from uh, the people that watch my videos. Um, it's still kind of, surreal that um, people out there watch enough of what I put out there for me to sustain a business from that. And I am truly, truly grateful for that. You know, I feel like I learned a lot from that community and then hopefully I can contribute, maybe not something that's like, everyone go build this, but I hope it I can do things that people can take something away from that to further their creative process. My wife and my daughter are my absolute world and I want to be successful so they are successful. We're all successful uh, as a family. We have so much fun and just really enjoy life together and I'm just so fortunate. So that's really the main driving force behind everything that I do. Again, the fact that people watch my videos and, and leave nice comments, uh, you know, it just means the world to me. And I, if you're someone that watches my videos, I cannot thank you enough. It already smells good. Are you doing it Vermont style? Vermont style, which means we add maple syrup. I am making a smoked old fashioned. That's what you do? Yes! This is, I mean, it's extremely fulfilling. You know, I'm definitely not some master woodworker or maker. I feel like I've kind of mastered the tools that I have available well enough to take the ideas that are in my head and create a physical product from that. 
that ability is extremely gratifying. You know, I'm not a perfectionist. I, I think that it's important to work for progress versus working towards perfection. So, you know, it's okay if I screw something up. Um, I screwed something up last night and I'm <laughs> having to uh, work through fixing that mistake. But I think that if I'm just constantly trying to get better and better and better, it's gonna continue to be really fulfilling. So the simple syrup, you do maple. And this is actually legit Vermont maple syrup, so. Yeah! -yo. I always felt like this desire to be creative in some way. And I never had an outlet for it until I became a maker. And it was like the thing that I had been searching for. To me, that's like a really, like, precious thing to be able to have that ability on a daily basis to be creative and to, to satisfy that side of yourself. When I go back to like that core thing of just being creative and just allowing that to kind of like drive the whole ship, that's when it's like, man, this is, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what's up. That's what's up. I have spent the last two days trying to think of some stupid way to make fun of Johnny. How many scorpion axes is too many scorpion axes? I came up with a big fat zero. Johnny Lambert, Johnny Builds, or the Popo. Whatever you call him, there's no denying that Johnny is a man with a heart of gold. What can you say about Johnny Lambert that isn't positive? He's one of the kindest, most supportive people I've ever met. It's been an uh, absolute pleasure over, I don't know, four or five years since we started our channels, uh, how to see how far you've come, how much creative energy you have, how much positivity you bring to this, this whole community. I love the guy. Me and him started YouTube around the same time, and what can I say? One of my best friends, best people in the world that I know. He is so generous with his time when it comes to giving advice and mentorship to other content creators. This community would definitely not be the same without him. You're one of the most supportive and inclusive people I've ever met. Over the years of following him, I have found his passion to be super contagious. Let's see, I'm not gonna say that he's a nice guy, because I know everyone is saying he's a nice guy best people in the world that I know, nicest guy. He has been one of the nicest and most supportive people since the first day I met him. But I can tell you this, he has welcomed me to this maker community with open arms. He's amazing. He's a prince of men. He's way better than you are. You know who you are. And you want to see everyone be as successful as they can possibly be. So I guess he is a nice guy. He's always been there for me to guide me through projects, just answer questions. And I am grateful and honored to call Johnny my friend. He not only is supportive, but he's also driven and he will just give you that infectious drive as well. Johnny is a friend. He is a support. He's kind, he's giving. He's been nothing but love and respect to me. It's so amazing to see what he's done, the journey he's taken and kind of what is ahead for him. There's kind of this idea sometimes that to get a big following and to do this for a living that you have to kind of be a me first, self-promotional person. And Johnny couldn't be anything farther from that. And so I love that he kind of sets this example and shows that you can have a great deal of success in this world uh, just by being kind and curious. So shout out to you, Johnny, and I wish you all the best. Brother, I love you and I wish you the best of luck in your journey. Johnny, thanks for the inspiration. Thanks for being an asset to our community. Here's to you, Johnny. Cheers to you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, damn dude. Well done.